Um, this is a video about Blanchard Stanley from a streetcar named Desire. It's just a revision video um, explaining their relationship in the play and how it changes and what Williams wanted to um, portray or display between these two characters, what he wanted to represent. Um, Stanley's the uh, the American immigrant, um, even though he says he's not, I suppose he's still like by blood uh, related to immigrants, his parents were Polish. Um, so he's referred to as a Polak by Blanche, um, even though that might be not typically, not technically true. Um, uh, he's still classed as an immigrant. Um, he's the uh, stereotypical man's man. Uh, he's definitely the leader of his group of friends that he has. Um, you know, he's a, a working man. Uh, he's got a wife now who's Blanche's sister, Stella. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. He also says that, though, to be fair, that he he did uh, he was in the one four fifth or one four first um, engineer corps in World War Two. So um, he was born in America and he did fight in the war as well. So um, I think the, that could explain quite a lot of his outrageous behaviour. But uh, we'll come back to that. Um, Blanche is sort of um, what was left over of the. Uh, old South, um, and she's definitely the upper class, uh, upper class representation in the um, in the play. He'd definitely be the lower class, and she'd be the upper class. So it's sort of like that perfect clash. And then if we could have someone in between, it'd be Stella. Stella's the the bridge in between the two characters. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons why they clash, apart from class. Um, I think it's also their personalities and the, the way they've been brought up. Um, a lot of themes that I've picked out, apart from it being like, obviously, them both being embodiments of Old South and New South. You know, the new American, Stanley, being the person who's come to America to, f to seek out the American dream and earn money and earn a living. And then Blanche, who's been fed with a silver spoon, and she's learnt the ways of sophistication and class, and um, she doesn't really need to work for a living. Where Stanley's worked all his life, um, just to get by and get an apartment. So uh, that's that's obviously a, a a worthy point to note. But um, if you think about it, it's been sort of span on its head because even though she carries the sophistication and the class of someone. Um, you know, uh, his better or his, um, uh, well, the class above. She doesn't have any money. She's completely penniless. So um, it sort of spins that uh, idea on its head in a way. Um, the way that they um, juxtapose, though, I think uh, it's more like he's represented as an animal when he's eating the meat, and um, Stella calls him a pig. Um, and where Blanche says, oh, it's like um, Stanley the caveman, he's going to take you home and <clears throat> if you're nice, he'll kiss you or something like that, if he's, if he's um, developed the brains for that. Um, so it's that, the, the first theme is probably uh, animal versus human, primitive and primal versus sophistication and the uh, evolution of man. I think um, Williams was trying to comment on um, uh, probably like the animalistic and the the loss of art and sophistication that we had, that America had through the um, through the Great Depression. Um, I think that everyone was bothered about work and uh, reproduction and not reproduction, sorry, uh, pr production and uh, reproducing the the American economy. That um, uh, art and things like that were forgotten. Um, Again, they clash because it's the difference between uh, fantasy and reality. Obviously, Blanche uh, representing fantasy. She needs fantasy to um, survive, basically, because she's on the verge of big, verge of insanity, um, arguably, with her anxiety that's been um, untreated, but she's pacified it with um, companionship and living in a fantasy world. Uh, those reminders being like the train that we hear constantly, even though that is outside, the train um, represents like a train hit, an emotional train hitting her. 
um, the blue piano, uh, and obviously the uh, Vesuviana polka that keeps playing, which is uh, the reminder of her like imminent descent into insanity, I suppose. Uh, and the only thing that like that's the only thing keeping her afloat is is the fact that she can escape in her own fantasies when she feels uncomfortable. But um, Stanley's the the first person who pulls her out of that and. Um, I don't think she's met anyone like Stanley before, so it provides quite a difficult but interesting watch. Um, the next thing would probably be um, education versus intelligence. I mean, this is an interesting one because uh, clearly Blanche is the, the more uh, educated. She's had the training, the teaching to be um, an intellect uh, raised among people who are intellectual and had the proper education where Stanley hasn't had that well, we we don't know but we can presume that he's not had the best ring uh, uh, best lifestyle best best uh, background and probably like minimal education um, but he despite that he's still quite intelligent so it's it's the I suppose his commentary on uh, do you, does a man really need to go go to school to to be intelligent or well, not necessarily because um, obviously Stanley's, Stanley's not been to college or anything like that. He's learned through morals and uh, understanding and um, experimentation, which again uh, reverts back to that caveman, uh, caveman theory where Stanley's sort of a caveman experimenting through trial and error. I suppose it's more like desiring companionship. He wants desire, he wants to just have sex. Um, just as the animalistic want um, and she wants companionship she wants someone to look after her to care for her I, sh I suppose it's more dependency um, she needs someone to depend on um, and provide for her because she's lost everything whereas um, Stanley sees that the woman should sort of like um, will pull her own weight um, he doesn't understand the patriarchal patriotic patriarchal um stereotype but in a way he he, he sort of does because uh, he is very patriarchal in his beliefs uh, when he bangs on about the napoleonic code that what what stellas is also his and vice versa um uh yeah i suppose between the relationship the the only comedic um Cool. The only comedic um, output through the through the whole of the play is from Stanley, and that's him taking the the Mickey out of um, Blanche's illness and her like anxiety attacks. And as much as we don't want to laugh at them, um, if you watch the film or uh, go and see the play, uh, he is comical in in his um, portrayal of Stanley uh, of this man who's. Um, if anything, ridiculing and make and tormenting uh, a woman who's um, uh, quite quite ill. Um, I suppose this is probably a commentary on uh, on even when it's a serious subject as mental illness. Um, the world probably still takes it as a joke because, like, I I won't have lied, I laughed as well because it's funny. It's I think it's meant to be funny, you're meant to laugh at it, but then <laughs> I think he wants you to realise or uh, at least um, understand that after you laugh, like, um, you, you were, even though you're attending to laugh, you know, you're laughing, <laughs> you're laughing at someone um, for the wrong reasons. Um, and I suppose the, that leads on to another point. There's, there's no, um, there's no uh, innocent party in the whole of Streetcar, even though, well, if anyone was going to be, it'd probably be Blanche. Um, the only thing she's done ever, uh, a lie, and then probably, like, you know, um, and sell herself um, for men, because obviously that's that's implied uh, heavily. And then at the end, I think she admits to it as well, that she, she did it for companionship because she was alone. She didn't know what to do. Um, so I'd say if anyone was the an innocent party, it'd probably be her. Uh, because even though she lies, she doesn't lie to hurt anyone. It's not for cruelty. It's to defend herself, def defend her, well, defend her insanity. Um, so I guess that leads on to the next point. Uh, cruelty versus innocence. Stanley sort of uh, 
the epiphany of uh, living in the hard times, living in a cruel world. Um, and he just keeps on reiterating the same points to her that, you know, um, you're living in a fantasy world, you know, you're, you're, you're silly. And then uh, he plays with the uh, he plays with the idea that he believes her and uh, lets her talk about um, the great cruise of the Caribbean that she's going to just to torment her. And then he's like, yeah, it never happened. It never will do. Um, I think he gets joy out of that uh, for sure. But it again highlights that cruelty versus innocence thing, where I don't think I don't think Blanche is well. Blanche doesn't really do anything unprovoked to anyone uh, in the play. Well, she lies to Mitch, but she only lies to Mitch to defend herself. She just lies about her age and lies about how um, uh, pure she is. And uh, I guess you could say uh, she lies about the way she looks as well, because she'll only see him after after dark. Um, and that leads on to uh, the next point with uh, light. Um, Stanley is probably associated to the light and Blanche is associated to the dark and the shadow, which is strange because you'd think, oh, Stanley, evil, you know, dark. But um, no, Stanley's the light. Stanley's the exposing uh, figure. Um, he's, he's the light that uh, Blanche wants to hide from um, throughout the play. She doesn't... She puts on the the orange um, paper lantern over her bulb so um, you know it doesn't expose how she looks and it's not a, a harsh and exposing light um, to the people when, when she's um, not getting changed but like um, when she's talking to people in there um, Stanley, uh, yeah, so Stanley would uh, is more of the light and he's exposing the truth, the real truth to everyone. He finds out all these rumours and then uh, verifies the rumours, um, tells Mitch, uh, it, like, breaks that um, romance between Stanley and, uh, and Mitch quite quickly um, because he's uh, shone the truth as such as a light would shine um, the truth uh so yeah, he's he's again that links to a reality, uh, but a harsh reality. And then, uh, shadow would be the other one of that, where Blanche is. Um, she doesn't necessarily. Well, she does actually physically hide in the shadows towards the end when um, Stanley stops her leaving. He's like. Um, Oh, I don't think I should interfere with you, or maybe I should. And she screams and then um, runs off to the back and hides in the shadows. And then when he comes closer, she smashes the bottle. Uh, she literally hides in the shadows while he's and and turns off all the lights because that's where she feels safe. Um, she feels like she can't be not found, but more like found out. Um, I suppose shadows uh, also have like links to imagery of like. Um, mythical beasts and, and creatures on the wall and um, uh, finger shadows and stuff like that um, representing like mythical things which it links to fantasy again so it heavily relying on fantasy versus reality um, what else have we got need f they have got some similarities similarities being um PTSD uh, for one, you say PTSD and say why, and PTSD being um, she saw her um, husband uh, shoot himself in the head and blames herself heavily because uh, obviously she said she's like, oh, I'm ashamed of you and um, uh, you disgust me because he's gay. Um, so she blames herself for the rest of her life and then that's when she goes uh, when all the money's being lost and all the funerals are happening that's when she goes and finds companionship for men and then she loses uh, her own innocence as well because she doesn't see um, a point to live in um, and then his PTSD will obviously come from the World War 2 um, engineer corps uh, probably tanks uh, the Shermans would have seen a lot of battle so he's probably seen his fair share, and so has Mitch. But Mitch probably handles it better, uh, or clearly he does, because um, uh, Mitch isn't a drunk. But then that links on to the next point, uh, alcoholism. 
um, quite clear. Uh, Stanley openly drinks. He drinks like four or five, maybe six or seven beers in one scene. Um, and there's bottles all around him. Um, where uh, Blanche will um, secretively drink. She'll be conservative in the way she drinks. Um not necessarily conservative, but um, she'll hide it again. Uh, both of them heavily drink, drinking, um, drinking with coke or drinking um, shamefully. Like, oh, I shouldn't have another one. I'll go on then. But she she makes it like it's the other person's um, idea for her to drink, um, or she mixes it. Like I said, where Stanley will just drink it straight, um, and he'll drink it in front of people openly. Uh, and by his choice, which again shows that he's drinking it in the light and he's uh, exposed himself. There's nothing that you can pick up on or judge because it's his choice. Where she's drinking in the shadows because it's more of a coping mechanism. Um, but they both drink, um, and arguably both of them at their worst when they do drink, uh, because they use it as a form of escapism. They return to their like um, personal morals, so his being cruelty and hers being fantasy. He, he when he as soon as he starts drinking he gets abusive um probably because um well he's no longer control over fully his body anymore and his mind because he's drinking he's smashed and her this likewise she's no longer control over her head so she starts hearing the music uh, heavily and um she just starts fantasizing about uh, all the things she's done and the gentleman callers and stuff like that um what else we got? Um, I suppose you have... Well, Stanley brings the worst out of Blanche. Um, and he does it all for fun and control. Whereas um, Blanche uh, literally just snaps back at Stanley because she's defending herself. Um, what else have we got? Um... Oh, is here. Um, Stanley being, um, while Stanley brings the worst out in Blanche, Stanley's also Blanche's um, poison or uh, weakness more, more than, uh, because w her escapism, his is cruelty, um, that gives him joy or being abusive to his wife, and hers is um, fantasy. So she be in a fantasy world and she feels okay. She feels alright. She can escape from. Um, her PTSD escape from anxiety um, but he, he um, his uh, coping mechanism uh, counteracts hers because obviously his cruelty towards her would be pulling her out of her fantasy denying her the ability to to escape um, you can see that like that's again nearly in every encounter whenever she's talking about things uh, he claims that she's a liar or um, that she's gone insane and uh again both of these uh both of these um characters sorry are always fighting over stella um fighting over stella to to join their side and i suppose stella would be the audience we find stanley funny and we find him endearing because he's comical uh and for for women or other people um attractive and then, but we uh, empathise with Blanche and sympathise with her because uh, of her, you know, a tragic tale. Um, so, uh, you know, Stella's always saying, oh, you should leave Stanley, which we probably agree with, or we should do, and definitely towards the end when he rapes her, we definitely should agree with. Uh, and in the in the film she does, but in the play she stays, she stays with, um, with Stanley. Um, uh... And I suppose we are the we are Stella as such. We are the 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 um, variable between two um, two you know a rock and a hard place. Neither of them are going to move from their their corners. Old South and New South, you know, innocence and cruelty. Um, but then I suppose also it's um, uh, desire and sex uh, versus um, you know um, uh, chastity and. Um, uh going back uh, 300 years in in um 
uh, sexual freedom. But then in a way, it's sort of contradictory because, you know, Blanche just shagged all those blokes and um, for companionship. But still, in her, in her morals, that's what she stands for. Um, so in a way, it's all contradictory. It all contradicts himself. St um, Stanley says, oh, you, should, you shouldn't listen to your sister. She's insane. But then he's also showing um, psychotic... Um, tendencies with his like lashing out of his uh, anger and stuff like that he has no control where and um, they all take him knock him out after he's been beating up Stella and put him under the shower to call him off um but he's still got like a really bad temper which is if anything is more harming to society than hers so again that's contradicting you though even though she is insane he's just as insane as she is in in um in argumentative terms um so yeah Stella would be that um the variable tendency that's that's um, pulled to and fro in sort of like a tug of war, um, tug of war idea, uh, and it's just a tug of war idea uh, between the old uh, old values and the new values. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just a commentary on uh, on on that. So yeah.